Lantern, welcome back, welcome back. Look at this little deer. Look at these little deer. How you doing, Sadie? Apparently, she is just about to give birth in turn, so if we're a little bit patient, then hopefully she'll be giving birth any second now. There's a lot of deer in here too, so I think it's probably time to see off at least a few of them into some other zoos or exhibit areas. All right, is she gonna give birth? Oh, I told you her number six. She's gonna go give birth. Let's scooch her. Maybe she needs a little bit of help. There you go, sweetie. Here she goes. There's gonna be another white-tailed deer baby right into the thicket so that she can feel nice and secure. I'm gonna put down a few more bilberries while we wait. All right. She's moving and grooving, walking around. How you doing, sweetie? There's lots of other deers. That doe is like, what are you doing? What's up? All right, here's another white-tailed deer. I think that we'll release this doe out to the wild. And then where is, like, this buck? Maybe this buck. Oh, she's being very picky about where she's going to give birth. She's thinking pretty hard about this. Well, maybe if we add some more red ferns in here for her. Ooh, and the beautiful smelly Heather. Let's get some Heather. Ah, come on, common Heather. There we go. What? A penguin's just been put in a crate. Ah, we're going to have to fix that in just a second. <gasps> there she goes. She's just had another baby, another little fawn. Oh, there it is. There it is right here. Oh, the miracle of birth continues in our absolutely amazing little deer exhibit, which makes me so happy. Now you, big pond keeper, Amber, our beautiful toad, is complaining about being in a smelly exhibit. How are you just sitting on your rump? Well, I guess he's not noticing. Like, all the beavers are complaining about a smelly exhibit, too. So that's when they're in the water. So let's go ahead and we're going to install... We'll come right over here to do it so it'll kind of be, like, out of view of uh, all the guests. But we're going to need to install some water filters on this place, in turn. Uh, but, yes, I'm very excited. Today we are also going to go and check on... Go. Very nice. We're going to go check on our awesome little frogs, the red-eyed tree frogs that we have installed into our zoo, and we are going to hopefully get our Spix macaws settled into their new aviary. So that's very exciting. And let's just go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Hopefully that'll help these guys out. Uh, can we hide it under a tree? Ooh, just about. I think we'll put it there so the guests can't see, but we can still come over and clean the whole system. So hopefully that'll keep the water much more manageable for everybody in there. Now, apparently we have, let's see, Amber, Wells Catfish. So hopefully the catfish will be happier now. Uh, apparently we have somebody, I could have sworn we've got somebody stuck inside a crate. Barren Ground Caribou number 15. What? Lemming Nom? Yeah, Lemming Nomer has been old for a long time. I don't believe them anymore. They're just pulling my leg. All right, where's the where's the crated penguin? Look at all of our emperor penguins. Oh my gosh, there's so many. We might need to start adopting some out. No joke. Pretty soon. Let's see. Fern Shadow. Emperor penguin number 17. What have you done? Why are you way over here? How do they do that? We've had some escaping penguins of late. So he'll be much happier if he's back in his exhibit. So there we go. There! You're going to be much, much happier in there. Oh, and Bramble's giving birth! Bramble! So many babies! Yeah, we definitely need to clear out some more of these deers. Not Willow. Number six just gave birth. Okay, we'll wait till some of them grow up. Whew! But that's enough of that for just a minute in turn, and we are going to pop over and see how our frogs are doing. Look, look, look! People are coming in to look at them! A whole bunch of people! That's awesome! Okay, intern, we need to get in here and make this comfortable for people to be in. So let's go ahead and throw in some benches. Let's put down uh, some donation boxes. Make sure that this is all tripped out. Ooh, and actually, while we are over here, let's come this way and we can figure out, let's get the aviary set up real quick because that would be very, very good to do. Let's see, a little door, a little aviary entrance number two, aviary entrance number one. Okay, should probably have entrance number one over here somewhere. 
if I can connect to these? I can! So, I think for now this will be a very small aviary that's just dedicated to the Spix Macaws. And it'll basically be one that people can walk in and then they can turn around and walk out. Um, yeah, they can like walk in here, they can check out the animals, and then they can turn around and walk back out is the idea. So, let's see. Yeah, there we go. This isn't going to be too hard, I think. I hope. Hmm, how big do we need to make it? Is this going to be big enough if they can walk around a little bit? Hmm, got to think about this for a second. I think that should be big enough for the macaws. Yeah, because they're going to have lots of trees and things too. So this is just for the Spix macaws right now. Because they seem to always be kind of getting into it with the other bird species back at the Phoenix Forest Aviary, or the Phoenix Forest Sanctuary. So for their aviary, we're going to build them something a little bit more private where it's just that one species of bird. Maybe one or two other little friends of theirs kicking around. Let's see, aviary wall height. Alright. Not quite matching up on the glass there, but I can totally live with that for now. Oh, is this it? Oh, this was it! Ha! <laughs> no wonder! Well, I feel like a silly goose now, so we're gonna wait for that research to go through. And while that research goes through, we need to get in benches and donation boxes for over here. So, let's see. Donation boxes. The endangered species in box seems like a perfect thing to put in here. Maybe right here? I don't really want to block people from being able to see. So maybe here, and we'll flip it. There we go. Oh, and Wynn has just given birth. And by the way, flipping the donation box just reminded me we need to flip these binocular stands. There we go. Whoops. No, I don't want to sell it. There. Now people will actually be able to use the binocular stands. No, don't sell the binocular stand. In turn, we want to turn it around. There. Oh, and Lemon the Lemming is now pregnant. Yay. And more baby beavers. We're always swimming in baby beavers. It's so awesome. All right, yay, donation! Somebody's already donating, that's awesome. And we want a little bit of seeding. Let's put some uh, endangered species seeding in here. Yeah, maybe somebody right there and somebody right... Mm. Somebody right here. Oh good, the research for that fence is done. All right, so let's come down here. Boom! Better than nothing, at least it kind of matches. Getting everything to match is apparently a little bit outside of my uh, abilities right now, but we have the invisible border. Whoopsie daisy. So let's go ahead and we'll apply that as needed. Let me see, how am I going to do this? Hmm. That should do it actually, because we can't get past there. And wrap this around. Wonderful. And then we'll put a border down that we can see for the other spots. And that'll wrap this around. There we go. And then we can put down a little a little fence border of some kind. Let's see, like a nice little low one. I think there was a really cute little low one that we found way over here. Yeah, this little brick rounded border. Perfect! And then... People can come in and look at them in here. Yay, intern! We're figuring this out. We are figuring this out. So we'll put the macaws in in just a second. So what we're going to do now is we are actually going to add in, let's see, a nice little cart. I think we're going to put a little cart in here. Um, hmm. Another little gift cart would be nice because I do like watching people walk around with our gift cart items. Whoa, whoa, easy there. And then, what else could be sneaking here for them to enjoy? I really want people to start being a little bit more interactive with what we've got available. Maybe a popcorn stand? Let's put a little popcorn cart in here. Why not? We'll put in a little popcorn cart. And then we'll see if we have any nibbles on another gift cart. So we'll see if these do well. If they don't, then we'll just pop them out and put something else in here. But now people have like a little refreshment station. And then when they come over here... Let's get them, not a restaurant, that's not what I meant to snag. We need to get them a restroom. There we go. And we'll give them a little family restroom kind of tucked back here off the beaten path a little bit. There we go. And let's grab the island jungle path because it looks pretty good in this area. 
there's that. And then this can come right down in here where people can walk right in and these will be where the macaws get to roam around. Nice! And we'll have to put a lot of decorative pieces, a lot of trees around this. So there's still a lot to do, but now we can get the Spix macaws settled in. So let's make sure they've got their tropical rainforest ground all put down. There we go. Okay, a little bit over here. And hopefully this will work. Like I said, this is the very first aviary I've ever tried to build like this. Uh, I have no idea how it'll turn out, so we're gonna have to see if the birds enjoy it or not. Also, I hate the with it's just, I have to have a little bit of green on the ground, I'm sorry, let me just sprinkle some moss down. Oh, that's so much better. So much better with a little bit of green. It's just so hard, it's just so hard in turn, it's hard to explain. Okay, now there's more green than brown, but I feel, I feel contented. Alright, and let's try this again, let's see. Tropical rainforest. And I don't think we'll put down any any pools, actually, because I think these guys are gonna be pretty darn happy with just like some humidity here and then their vitamin water, because it's very important to make sure that the birds especially get enough calcium in their diets and things like that. So we're just gonna put vitamin water in for them. All right, let's put this here. And let's see, maybe put in some little chameleon trees. Actually, what we saw the Sphinx Macaw really seem to enjoy quite a bit was, let's see if we can find it, not the Kapok tree, not the Killy tree, it was the Duran trees. They went absolutely bedonkers for those Duran, durian trees, I mean. Let's see, coconut palms, elephant ear trees. They did like the elephant ear trees, if I remember correctly. So we'll put like one elephant ear tree, two elephant ear trees in. So they've got room to jump up inside the trees. Oh, and they loved the bananas. I remember that. So I'll put like a little little cluster of bananas. Banana trees in a couple spots, for sure. And then let's see, not too big. Not the right tree, foxtail tree. Kinda there, not quite. Oh, is this a smaller elephant here? Hmm. Let's see, Um, I'm not seeing that durian. And that durian tree was a popular selection. All of the birds wanted to get up in the durian trees. So, hmm, where's the durian tree? Let's see if we can find it really quickly. Elder, Geiger. Let's see, go back a little bit. Date tree. We might not yet have the durian tree as an option. So we'll have to wait. We will have to wait in turn, which is too bad because they really did seem to enjoy it quite a bit. But there we go. A few more trees down. Now we'll get on the ground and we will start putting in the detail pieces, the important details that kind of tie an exhibit together and make it so good for the birds. Where's the monsoon grass? Oh, is this it? Is this it? No. Oh, those are some pretty ferns. But they really seem to thrive off of having a bunch of monsoon grass uh, put down. No, not that one. So let's go ahead and grab, if we can find it, the monsoon grass. All right. Do 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 do. Got it. Yes, this is it. This is the monsoon grass, and they really seem to do very well with tons of monsoon grass over in the Phoenix Bird Sanctuary. So we're gonna put down quite a bit of it. Varying heights so the birds can kind of forge around, find different things. It's gonna be very nice once we put in a bunch of forging items for them too. Good enrichment, you got to keep those birds' brains sharp, especially because this is an intelligent species of parent. And they're very rare, so I'm really hoping if we set up the enclosure nice enough, they will be kind enough to breed prolifically for us. And that would basically pay almost all of the zoo's expenses and allow us, since we're starting to run a little bit lower on money, to be able to expand continuously. Because right now it's getting to the point where you start to have to talk budget. And that always slows down the ability to get really awesome animals. It's, it's the fact of life, but it just does slow down the ability to get super awesome animals into the zoo and to make it super awesome for the current animals. Let's see, a little bit of Poppins New Guineas. No, not you. Uh, not really feeling these guys. Let's see, what about you? A little bit of lamp? No, no, not really feeling you either. Maybe some ferns. Ooh, definitely some toadstools. 
A little bit biased towards the mushrooms. Just seems like this little uh, this little humidity thing and mushrooms should go together, if you ask me. And then let's see what else we have down here. That little pop of color again. I do like that little pop of color, especially because it offers like the same color at a different height than the New Guineas. Now I kind of want to put in a New Guinea though. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is just a really nice little bush. I don't know why. This bush just really charms me. It just seems to kind of fill in a niche, a little nook that's missing elsewhere. All right, do we want a little log? I do kind of want a small log. There we go, small wetlands log. Just to kind of stimulate some things that have fallen. No lavender. I wish I could put a few more things. We'll sprinkle some ladies' ferns in here. Let's see, various, various sizes. What's this? Lavender tea? Oh, that's better, yeah. This giant, giant ladies' fern. Maybe just like right over here to provide a nice chunk of sudden cover for the birds. All right, and how we doing? A little bit bare back here. Lily of the Valley, no, especially because they might nibble on it and that's definitely not something we want. But some of these jungle lilies wouldn't be bad. There, there, hopefully the birds will appreciate the depth of thought and care that we're trying to put into their exhibit. Um, anything else that jumps out? Maybe mix in these fringed, just because we can. Maybe a few sticks of bamboo. No, 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 no. Hmm. Maybe some of this. Nope. All right. I think that they are ready to go in turn. I think that they should be some pretty content, pretty content birds uh, as far as the plants go. Because now I just remembered we do have to add in there a couple of those. Uh, we do have to add in their food and the rest of their enclosure pieces. So, ooh, we need a hollow log with bananas for sure. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put some big old piles of bananas and fruit down here. And we'll put in their vitamin water, sprinkle it all around. Very important. Oh, it cleared out the grass, but that's okay. It is very, very important that they can reach their vitamin water. So we'll sprinkle it in multiple places. And over here by these, these bushes, we'll put down some berries so they can forage for the berries under the bushes. And to enrich their lives and keep them curious, we're going to get some squeaky toys, some balls with rattles, and some feeder balls prepared. So that should hopefully keep them pretty happy. Now we can move them in. I'm so excited. Yay. Now we can move these little guys in. So let's pick them up and plunk them in and release. So there's Sphinx Macaw number 30. Here's 33. We ended up with three mated pairs and one baby who, she was an adolescent, so she's adult size, but she was still, she was still trying to chase her parents down and I snagged her parents as one of the pairs so without knowing that she was a baby. So we, we got her too, cause I didn't want to have her be without her family. I think it was Fern Shadow. Yeah, Fern Shadow the second is the baby that we got. And I don't know, now that we've moved them to a new environment, the birds will probably pair up in different clusters, but it'll be interesting to see if Banana Brains the second and his mate, Fern Shadow the first, actually hook back up. So that'll be interesting to see. All right, there you go, Banana Brains too. I wonder if he's gonna enjoy bananas as much as his father, Banana Brains, the original, uh, once did. So, oh my gosh, we actually have an aviary. Oh my goodness, we've never done this before in turn. Never ever! Okay, before we open it to the public, let's put down a little donation box in here. Because, oh my gosh, and we'll put down a couple little benches. Because I don't know about you, but when I go to the the other zoos, I love sitting inside of their aviaries and just sitting on the benches for hours. <sighs> we did it! We did it! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, oh, we need a gate! We need a gate! Okay, quick, gate, 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 gate. I'm so glad that we got down... So I could remember that so that people can take care of these birds because they're very expensive, very rare, very wonderful creatures. There, now we have a gate. And Norwegian Lemming 2 is now pregnant. Yay! All right. Oh, and the red-eyed tree frog is very thirsty. Okay. So we're not going to drink from our little pond. Got it. Okay, hang on, bubbly. Yeah, not going to drink from our little pond. Feeling a little bit exposed. Can I do anything about that? We'll get this elevated nest box and we'll see if that helps out. And we're gonna put down some vitamin water. 
In fact, I think we might remove this little pond uh, and just put down vitamin water at this rate. So we'll do that. Let's see, Montaigne. Let's just do this. That'll give us more room to give them more areas to relax and hide. So that'll be a good thing. And then what's... Come here, come here. Come here, big old fern. I'm gonna stick you down over here too. And gonna stick in some vitamin water for them. There. That should make you feel better, little one. Oh, and the catfish is breached on land. How do you manage to do that, little one? I'm going to put you in the big pond now. There, that should take care of that guy. And then let's get down here. And our very first aviary! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Wow! It's so pretty! I guess I could have put taller trees in here for sure. <gasps> Look at the macaws! There you go, guys! You have your very own absolutely awesome enclosure! What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Look at all the bananas! Look at all of them eating the bananas! And making some noise! Oh, it's snoring! <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that noise was, and it's just snoring because it's eating. Banana brains, is that you? Oh, missed it. I want to I wanna get a picture of this bird eating all these bananas. It's just adorable. Whoa! Ah! Missed it. Missed it, but that's okay. Oh, look at them roam around! I think they're going to be pretty content in here. They're able to wiggle this way. They're able to walk around. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, except for the bird poop that they just put down. Dang it, birds, I'm trying to like get a nice shot of you guys so I can put it on our, our zoo tweeper. What? Where'd they go? <laughs> oh, it's so hard. At least I got a, a pretty picture of the pretty ferns. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. But here we go in turn. <gasps> look, look, and there's already people coming. What do you guys think? What do you think about our awesome Sphinx macaws? Yay! Seems happy! Yay! They're grooming themselves! Yay! So we have some happy kids. That's wonderful, intern. Well, we have more shipments of the animals that we collected from the Phoenix Forest Sanctuary on its way. Uh, so we probably need to work on... Oh, where are you going, sir? We're going to work on sprucing this area up a little bit, kind of putting uh, some more some more decorative pieces up. We'll put another fountain down over here. And we're gonna prepare this area. I think we might put like the capybara. What else did we collect? We got capybara. We still have uh, the Hopi that need to come this way. So yeah, I think we'll put like the capybara over here. And the, hop the Hopi uh, are actually not a tropical species. So I think we might put them kind of over here as just like a little, a little side shoot until we have more stuff going this way. Because there's still so much work to do in this zoo, but I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Hopefully now we can teach people about some more amazing species like the red-eyed tree frog that people seem to be absolutely enjoying. We're going to make him cheap so people will hopefully come and, <laughs> and buy things. You too. You can be cheap too. Come buy stuff from them, guys. Come on. Oh. And then, oh yeah, we have that challenge we need to work on as well from our bosses. They have been asking me to finally get on that. So we'll work on that too. And Mars the Pan's pregnant with, with kit number two and three. Yay! Woohoo! Oh, and we got a squeaky toy. Into the bird enclosure it goes. All right, there you go, guys. A couple squeaky toys. Have fun. Look at it jump around. The squeaky toys are so weird sometimes. All right, I'll see you next week, intern. Make sure that you wash your boots well and that you're ready for poop scooping when you come back because we're going to have a lot of work to do here in the zoo. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.